The NHL 24 season is officially upon us. Let's take a deep dive into all of the new features that NHL 24 has to offer. My name's Nasher. I'm a hockey and NHL content creator, and I had the chance to play NHL 24. I'll be showing you raw overhead gameplay so you can see how the game plays, and I'll give you my thoughts as well. I also sat down with the lead creative director of NHL 24, Mike Englehart, who's going to give us some insight as to why they made these changes. Let's go ahead and jump into this thing. The biggest change without a doubt to how the game plays this year is the exhaust engine and everything that falls underneath that. This new system is meant to emulate those real NHL shifts where pucks are pinned in the offensive zone for an extended period of time. As the offense builds up pressure by taking shots, completing hits, and holding possession of the puck, a meter will fill right there in the middle of the ice. Once that bar is all the way full, you'll get an adrenaline effect on offense, improving your passing, your shooting, and your speed. Not only do you get a boost on offense, but the defensive team is going to be pinned as well, affecting their skating and stamina. Mike talked about some of the issues defense will face, as well as how to defuse the situation. Defensively, you're going to be hit with a pinned effect, so a bit of lactic acid in the legs, your stamina is going to burn off a bit, a bit quicker, and you got 30 seconds to make the most of it, but the defensive team can defuse it with getting the puck out of the blue line for five seconds continuously. This is essentially a game within a game, as you're not only battling to score goals and play hockey as normal, but you're also battling to fill this pressure bar. Once it's all the way full, there's no doubt about it, you can actively see and feel the difference right there on the ice. Also, the energy bar have now been moved underneath the player so you can see when the defense is struggling it is actively blinking red and that's when you know you can take advantage of the opportunity while playing the game this really does become a battle and on defense you are doing everything in your power to get the puck out of the zone Speaking of that, on defense, the way to end this sustained pressure is simple. All you have to do is clear the puck out of the zone for five seconds. I saw a lot of questions about this, and the answer is no. Icing the puck does not reset the meter, so you will go to the faceoff, and that bar will still be full. Not only will the players on the ice be impacted by the exhaust engine, but also the goaltenders as well. Let's have Mike hop in to discuss how the fatigue can affect the goalies just as much, if not more, than the players. So goalies will now have uh, visible energy levels in the game, shots on net, getting them moving left and right will start to peter out their, their uh, stamina. Uh, this will affect their precision, so their ability to make saves accurately. So you're going to see more rebounds. You're also going to see the goalies start to change their stance, the type of saves that they throw. And at the end of the day, we should see more goals score from more dangerous places on the ice and remove some of that predictability we've seen with the goal scoring in the past. So there you have it. Not only does the exhaust engine affect the players, but it affects the goalies just as much. When tired, the goalies become a little bit slower on those post-to-post -post movements, but where you really see it is with the rebounds and the desperation saves. If a low shot is taken on net and the rebound bounces across the crease, an energized goalie will be able to shift over and make that save as they should. If a goalie is fatigued during that same opportunity, they're going to be way more likely to go for that crazy diving desperation save. Now, occasionally, those desperation saves will work. I saw some of the craziest saves that I have ever seen in hockey video games. But in terms of actually playing and what happens most of the time as it should, the goalie is left lost, the net is left open, and you can bury a lot of those rebound goals. As Mike mentioned, the issue in NHL 23 was the predictability of a lot of the goals. People would wait for that picture-perfect shot, whether that be a cross crease or cutting across the net. Goals are going in in a variety of different ways, and Mike's noticing that in their testing as well. But as you see the goalies start to become a bit more active and leave the, the net wide open, you should be incentivized to put the puck towards the net. So uh, you don't always have to work the puck in tight. You can take shots from the point, you can work it high in the slot, and we are seeing a more balanced uh, a range of goal scoring variety. With goalie fatigue, it allows you to personalize your game and get a bit more creative. You might take more of those unique off angle shots because it's gonna wear that goalie down. It's also kind of interesting how the game changes from the start of the period to the end of the period. At the start, you may need to actually dangle a goalie out, beat him with the backhand forehand. At the end of the period, you can maybe depend more on those consistent rebound shots. So goalie fatigue is going to affect you not only on a shift by shift basis, but also a period by period basis. A goalie's energy will start to recover when you clear the puck out of the zone. You get a whistle, a timeout, and it completely resets, obviously, with the start of a new period. These two features combined to make this one of the most different feeling NHL games we've had in a long time. And Mike even said that himself. Uh, we think the, this, these changes are, are good. We think they're authentic. We think they add new life into the game. And more importantly, 
I always like in good sports games to, you know, eating your favorite snack. You always want one more, one more. We want to get the gameplay in the series back to that where you finish a game, maybe you got something to do, but you're like, oh, I got time to sneak in yeah. one more. That's where we want to take this product back to. So hopefully this will bring a breath of fresh air to the NHL series. Next, let's discuss the new hitting system called Physics-Based Contact. They've essentially tweaked and reworked the controls to give you more options on how you play the body. In NHL 23, it felt like you were going for a hit and just hoping for a certain result. Sometimes you would go up, gain some speed, gain some momentum, going for that game-changing check, and all it resulted with was a slight bump. In NHL 24, this has been reworked to allow you to have complete control. If you want to go for a light bump, you'll just flick up on the analog stick. That'll give them that light shove. However, if you want to wind up that high impact check that we know and love, you'll just pull back on the analog stick to initiate it and then explode forward into those hits. Mike's adamant that these different hitting decisions will change the way that players think about the game. And I think the biggest change that's going to make a difference is the utility of hitting. So hitting in the past hasn't really had a big impact on player stamina. Yeah. Uh, players recover really quickly. So people usually go to the poke checking because it seems to be the, the best way to defend. This year when you land a hit, it's going to have substantial uh, impact on stamina. And more so, if a player is already tired and you hit them, they're going to recover um, substantially slower. So if you see a player who's been on the ice too long and you can land a clean hit, that player is going to be picking themselves up slowly, giving you this micro-man advantage. Somebody's going to be open, find a guy, you got a goalie fatigue, take advantage. So now hitting adds another tactical layer into the gameplay this year. Obviously in hockey, there's a time and place for each. Not every single hit you go for, you want to be a huge hit. Sometimes you want just enough to lightly knock them off the puck. But other times you're gonna wanna lay that big check to take your opponent out of the play. I'll say right away, hitting definitely feels more rewarding here in NHL 24. When you actually wind up that hit and time it correctly, it just feels great. But on the opposite side, hitting is definitely more difficult and now it is more of a skill. You have to time that hit correctly or else you're just gonna get dangled or burned to the outside. If you're showing too early that you're winding up that hit, that's gonna allow your opponent to make a quick move to get around you. When you do finally connect on that big hit, it feels satisfying and you're rewarded for it as well. Your opponent's gonna be slow to get up and slow to get back into the play. They added tons of different ragdoll and physics-based animations. So where you are on the ice, how the bodies impact, that's all going to change what animation you get. And the best part, you can now body people over the bench and even break the glass on very special occasions. It's sick when it happens, but also somewhat rare. We were going out of our way to try to get those hits, and it only happened once, maybe twice a game. Along with that, there's also a dedicated hip check button now, so you won't accidentally make the wrong hit at the wrong time. If somebody's burning you along the boards, hit that hip check button and they'll go flying. It sounds like success you may have had in the past is not going to work the same here in NHL 24. I think with the game in general, what players are going to have to realize is the recipe that, we, that players have been using in the past it's not the recipe that the game is defined by now. So I think there's this, this uh, gestation period where you have to get used to the new components in the game. Physics-based contact is high risk, high reward. You'll make some mistakes. It'll take some getting used to, but once you have it down, it feels really solid. And honestly, what's most important is that it just feels fun. The hitting montages are going to go crazy. Now let's talk about more of a minor feature that I think the experienced NHL players will really utilize. Vision passing is a new passing modifier that allows you to hold the pass button and icons appear above the player's head. This means that any given time on the ice, you can make a pass to any player anywhere. Where. I found this to be particularly helpful with breakouts and stretch passes. In NHL 23, you'd send passes up the ice and it would just go to the wrong guy. You can also really use these on power plays to find those tight lanes that maybe you couldn't find before, but now you can make that direct pass. One thing I did notice is even when using the icon passing, the passing attribute still matters. So not every pass is going to be an absolute dime. Now, like vision passing is the thing that I, that I lean on. And the nice thing is without making any real substantial changes to our AI we're creating more hockey plays because the ice is more open obviously if you got defenders between you and, and a long outlet pass you have, still have to respect the space and yeah. but there's also moments where you sneak it through the seam and you hit a guy for a breakaway and those moments just haven't happened before so well for the most part it definitely helps in setting up those tic-tac-toe plays that we all know and love speaking of tic-tac-toe they've also added one touch passing so as a pass is on its way across to another player you can pre-hit a button making that pass directly one touch to the next player. Experienced players with a good eye for the game will quickly pick up on this open space. 
those core players, competitive players, they can see the ice, right? They can see the opportunities. You couldn't do it, but you had to wait to take possession and make the pass, the window is gone, and you know that, that seconds matter out there. So that's what we wanted to, to bring in. And you can pull off some pretty sick tic-tac-toe goals yeah. out there that you couldn't do before. It's not a crazy change, but definitely appreciated. And I think we'll see a lot more highlight reel passing plays here in NHL 24. Next up, let's talk about total control controller mapping. This is a brand new controller scheme for NHL 24 that maps some of the more difficult dekes in the game to buttons on the controller. One of the more common complaints from casual players is they just simply could not pull off some of the more difficult moves. For example, under this new system, the Y or triangle button is the Michigan. So in order to complete the Michigan, you'll go behind the net, hold Y for a certain amount of time, let go, and that initiates it. Now you still have to time these dekes and they're not easy to score so to do the michigan you have to hold it for the exact amount of time but it is definitely much easier than last year so now everyone who plays this game will at least be able to attempt the new dekes will they be able to score on them probably not because it is still tough this is definitely going to be a more controversial feature as i know there's lots of people out there including myself that spent hours perfecting the old dekes i asked mike straight up are the dekes too easy under these new controls and this was his response tuned in a way where you've got to find the right location, you've got to find the right frame to activate it on. Yep. So it's not a gimme goal. I mean, having said that, we know players are gonna figure things out as they go. Um, you know, if that ends up being something where it becomes too easy, that's that's something we can definitely look at once it's out. But, you know, let's kind of wait and see how it plays out. So for good or for bad, this kind of evens the playing field a little bit. Also, it is completely optional. You can still play with the normal skill stick controls. Oh, I almost forgot to mention there is a reverse hit button now. So any player has the ability to reverse hit. It's still tough to do, but you can do it. And while we're on the topic of controls, we have to mention the changes to the left trigger and back skating. Its use as we know it has been effectively removed from the game. Mike gives us the full rundown. And one thing with skating backwards was it was really almost invincible to body checking, but also at the same time, we're responsible for making a game that's fun, but trying to be, you know, representative, authentic of the real game. I don't see many people going down the ice coast to coast skating right. backwards. And so we've changed it in a way to allow you to create, you know, open space by pivoting at the right side, depending on what your shot is left or right and which wall you're on. But it was about pulling out an exploit, trying to get the game to be a little bit more hockey and making sure people can't manipulate the experience and, and affect other people. From what I've seen, how you enter the zone and set up the offense has changed entirely. And while you still can backskate under certain situations, you definitely can't do it like you could before. And last but certainly not least, don't worry goalies, I didn't forget about you. They've added new human goalie controls that make it a bit easier to pick up a controller and play in goal for the first time. Essentially, goalies are now tethered to the net, so you can't accidentally roam away, and you can just focus on making saves. However, EA has heard your feedback regarding goalie from the community playtest, and they're looking to make this position the best that it can be. Hopefully, these new features will make goalie easier for the casual user and better for the more experienced. Don't get me wrong, goalie is still one of the most difficult positions in the game, and they've added some features for the more experienced tendies as well. The new instinct system allows experienced goalies to try to predict where they think the shooter is going to go. For example, if you're in a World of Chell game and see that their center has been sniping you glove side over and over again, you can start to predict where those shots are going. If you guess correctly, you'll get a boost and have a better shot of pulling off that save. And if you guess wrong, well, you guessed it, a better chance of it going in. By no means is it set in stone that if you make a mistake with the instinct, it will go in. This is just a game within a game. Just that little extra bonus. You see a shooter beating you glove side all game, now we can start to predict that. With some of the new goalie animations we mentioned earlier, I think human goalies will have a good time with this new system and hopefully be able to make some crazy saves. Big thanks to Mike for the interview and openness regarding this series. This was his final thought. Even the EA employees are stuck wanting to play more. Being here way later at night on the couch because it's like one more, one more, one more. Because every game has a surprise, which is again, Real sports, that's why we watch. We, we go watch our favorite teams because we don't know how it's gonna be written tonight and a sports game needs to deliver on that same promise and I think we have that this year. And that being said, I think that about sums up our NHL 24 gameplay deep dive. Overall, I think it's safe to say this is the most different NHL game that we've had in many years. I'm pumped to see how all these features and different systems come into play once we all get our hands on this game. But feel free to toss a comment down below and let me know your honest thoughts. NHL 24 is available for pre-order now. I'm Nasher, and I'll see you on the ice.